and alpha males. I haven't actually recorded a YouTube video in a little while. It's been a little while. Obviously, there's been videos coming out on my channel, but I tend to record a bunch of videos all at once and then sort of schedule them out, like filter them out, fatter them out. So first time I've actually sat down and recorded in maybe like a week or two for YouTube. And I think another part of the reason or a part of the reason why is I put a lot of pressure on myself that all of these videos have to be perfect. They have to be, you know, as much value as I can cram in. And sometimes I don't take my own advice, which is give yourself permission to suck. And so for any of you content creators out there, the struggle is real. I completely know what you're going through, but probably the best advice that I can give you is give yourself permission to suck every once in a while. Just do some fun, casual, silly little videos. And that's what this is here today. So we're going to talk about how to be an alpha male. I asked chat GPT, tell me how to be an alpha male. And you guys know alpha is not really a term that I use that often. In fact, I've done articles talking about why I avoid that term. But I asked ChatGPT anyway, and generally speaking, you know, I know what people mean when they say alpha. They mean like a masculine, strong, you know, man who doesn't put up with shit and, and blah, blah, blah. I think it's just one of those words that can mean a billion different things to a billion different people, which is part of why I don't use it. And I think a lot of people use the word alpha to shame other guys. And I think a lot of guys will take that concept of alpha and put all this pressure on themselves to be like this James Bond, perfect alpha male. And so they'll go to the absolute extreme and they'll be like, oh, bro, like you bought a drink for a woman. That's beta, bro. That's not alpha. And, you know, you cuddled with a girl for 20 minutes after sex, bro, that's not alpha, that's beta as fuck. And so I see a lot of guys that will sort of shame either other people or themselves with these terms of like alpha or beta or the current fucking word of the day right now is simp. Oh my God, that's simp behavior. At the end of the day, I always say whatever you guys, and this applies to women too, but whatever you guys want to do, beautiful, do that. Don't worry so much about trying to be alpha or beta. Like half of the shit that I do in my life, someone would come along and say like, bro, that's like beta as fuck. Like, why do you love your girlfriend so much, bro? Why do you cuddle with her on the couch for hours? What, like, what, bro, that's beta. Cool. I'm happy. So as long as you're doing what makes you happy, and as long as it doesn't hurt anyone else, that's beautiful. That's what I call alpha. So I asked ChatGPT, how do I be an alpha? And the first thing it did, which chat GPT loves to do. And by the way, if you don't know what I mean, when I say chat GPT, it's just an AI. You can go to chat.openai.com and you can play around with it for free. But chat GPT loves to give these like little speeches before it gives you an answer where it goes, remember, you know, make sure you're doing this in a healthy and beautiful way. Like it always loves to give these caveats at the start. So I let it run its little fucking disclaimer at the start and then I will we'll get to the good bit. So the disclaimer is remember being alpha or dominant is not about exerting power over others or being aggressive. Yeah, I, I like that. It's about being confident in your own abilities, being assertive in your communication and leading with respect and empathy. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Everyone responds differently to styles of leadership and dominance. So always strive to be understanding and respectful. Okay, thank you, ChatGPT. Really appreciate the disclaimer. <laughs> Here we go. Now we get into the actual answer. Here are 10 ways that can make you become more dominant, confident, and assertive, like an alpha male, which is probably what most of you mean, right? When you say, I want to be a little more alpha, you're thinking, I want to be a little more dominant. But even then, dominance can go into the territory of where you're controlling other people. But I think, generally speaking, most of you have a pretty, a pretty, I don't like to use the word healthy, but whatever, you, we'll use that word. You have a pretty healthy view of dominance. You understand that dominance comes with responsibility. You know that Spider-Man quote, with great power comes great responsibility. You understand dominance means not forcing or the way that we like to do dominance is not forcing people. It's sort of just saying, hey, here's what I want. Do you want it? If the person says yes, awesome. If they say no, cool, I'm going to go ask someone else. So that is dominance, that is con confidence, and that is of assertiveness. So the very first one, establish clear goals. Absolutely, fucking lutely Like a big definition of... God, I'm... I'm in two minds here, right? Because you guys know that I never use the word alpha male and I, I 
sort of go against it. I really don't like that word, but fuck it. Let's just use it for this podcast. So understand every time I use the word alpha in this podcast, you understand what I mean. You understand that I'm saying there's not one alpha way of doing things. There's not one correct way of doing things. Don't shame yourself by saying, oh, fuck, I'm not an alpha male, but fuck it. We'll use the term alpha male because I think it fits here. So one of the first things I'd say, if you want to be an alpha male is having some sort of clear mission or purpose in your life. And as ChatGPT says here, set sort of clear, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goals. So in other words, don't say something, and I see this a lot, right? Well, guys will be like, all right, I want to get laid. And I'll say, what does that even mean? Like, with whom? How many times? Would it be you just want to have your dick go into a pussy a bunch of times? Or do you want to meet some women and have a lot of sex with like one particular woman or a couple of women? Do you want to go deep with that sex? Or do you just want to have a lot of it? Does that sex need to be, you know, women that you meet on the street? Or can it be online dating? Or can it be in bars? Like get a little bit more clear about what it is that you actually want. Because if you're not clear, how the fuck are you ever going to know when you get there? How do you even know what you're striving for? It's just vague and nebulous. And if your goal is something like business, I see a lot of people that go, I want to start a business. And like, that's the kind of, that's like all the goal that they have. My first question would be, <clears throat> why? And so anytime you have goals, but you're not clear on those goals, like you just say, I want to have sex, or I want to make money, or I want to have friends. If you don't have an actual clear goal, the part of the way that you can get that clear goal is by asking yourself why. Like, what am I actually trying to achieve here? Like, why do I want to start a business? And some things might come up and you might go, oh, shit, well, I want to start a business because I want to be financially free. Like, I hate having to go to work and do the nine to five. I hate my boss telling me what to do. I want to be able to have a little bit more independence, a little bit more agency, I guess, in how I earn the money. Okay, beautiful. Now we can start to reverse engineer that. So you could write a budget. And you could say, okay, well, I'm going to need $2,500 a month, you know, to pay the bills. Okay. What sort of business could I start where I can start working towards that? Or what am I passionate about that I think I could monetize? And you don't have to know how to monetize it at the start. At the start, you just kind of build the business and do shit. And then you slowly earn more money over time. But do you see how if you actually know why you're doing the thing? It can give you some clarity on how to then reverse engineer that. So if you were to say something like, I want to have a lot of sex. And I said to you, why? And then you said, well, because I've been in two long-term relationships my entire life. And those two women weren't super sexual. And I don't feel like I really got a chance to explore my bucket list and try some different stuff. And so I just have this list of like hundreds of things I want to try and explore and see what my body is capable of and see what other women are capable of. See like, you know, how I can explore with them and they can explore with me. I want to try all that stuff. Then I can go, that's fucking beautiful. Now we can start to reverse engineer how to make that happen. So the first thing to do would be to write a sexual bucket list of all the things you want to try. The second thing would be to go out and talk to women and see if they want to try any of those things with you and play the numbers game, talk to a lot of women, see who's up for it, see who isn't, all of that kind of stuff. But we can start to like reverse engineer that. Or someone who says, hey, I want an amazing social life. I'd say, why? Okay, well, all of my life, I feel like I've just had shallow friendships and I had just acquaintances during high school and college and I don't really feel like I got to know them very well. I don't really feel like any of them ever would have taken a bullet for me or had my back. And that's something that I've always felt like I'm missing, like just a group of people. Okay, now we can reverse engineer that. You could go on my forums and make some friends there. The people on there are super freaking loyal. You could go to meet up and screen really, really, really hard for people that are into sort of deeper friendships. You could read books on how do I have a deep friendship? Like, how do I build a deep friendship? I've done tons of videos on my channel on that kind of stuff. You know, you can start to reverse engineer this shit. So we'll bring it back to the the things that chat GPT, right? But yeah, I really like this first one, just having goals and having some sort of mission, I definitely would call that quote, alpha male. By the way, also, I'm a fucking dumbass. I just realized why I'm sitting here so fucking cold. I'm sitting here shivering like hell. And I'm like, why am I struggling to talk? Why am I shivering? It's because I left the air conditioning on. Why is the fucking air conditioning on in the first place? I don't even know. So give me half a second. I'm going to go turn that off. 
Okay. And by the way, for any of you in America, in, in Australia where I live, it's winter right now. So why did I even have the air conditioning on in the first place? I don't fucking know. My God, I am cold. All right. N number two, <laughs> maintain physical fitness. Yeah, this is a big one. Okay. So I, I have a, a, a love-hate relationship with the red pill, like as in the red pill Reddit and, and that community. On the one hand, I, I think they've done amazing good for myself and so many other men. On the other hand, I see a lot of guys that stay in the red pill and don't move on. My personal view is that the red pill is a beautiful stepping stone. You go in there, you get your shit together, you work on your masculinity, you start hitting the gym, you, you work on your physical appearance, you work on all of that self-improvement shit, and then you move on to maybe a, again, I really hate this word, so I'll use a different word, a more nuanced version of a, a more nuanced view of women. I think the, the red pill has some very strict, almost religious in their own religion views of women, women. I think that they think, or they actively say that all women are the same, that they all have the same fucking preferences and they all act the same. And if you can figure out women, then you can figure out all women. I really can't agree with that. It's a, it's a very like beginner or intermediate concept, but when you've met a ton of women, when you've had a lot of sex, when you've dated a lot of women, or even just had a lot of female friends, or just grown up around women, like maybe a bunch of women in your household, you know, you realize that, I mean, this sounds so fucking obvious, but every woman's different. Yeah, there's some similarities, just like with men, there's some similarities, but you guys wouldn't sit there and say, oh, all men are exactly the same. You'd be like, no, we're fucking not. That's kind of how women feel when you sit there and say, all oh, women are the same. They're like, what are you fucking talking about? Like, we have some similarities, sure, but we're not all the same. So I think the red pill gets caught up in some of those concepts. And so, again, I think the red pill is a beautiful stepping stone. It absolutely helped me. But I think if you stay in there for the rest of your life, you're missing out on a lot of the nuances when it comes to women, when it comes to relationships when it comes to sex when it comes to life in general i think that they have a very like i said religious a very zealot like zealot just very stubborn and strict view of a lot of concepts and they don't tend to be or a lot of them in there don't tend to be open to different viewpoints a lot of them are and i really gel well with those people I can shout out to one of my friends, a guy called Jack Napier. You can just look him up on YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel, Jack Napier. He talks about a lot of like red pill concepts, but he's very fucking open-minded. And I've been on his channel. He's been on mine. He's very fucking open-minded and he cares more about like truth and, you know, discussion and debate, although he doesn't really argue. So it's more like friendly debate, but he's someone that's very, very open-minded. But yeah, that's my little rant on the red pill. Back to this here. So the point of this whole conversation was for me to say the red pill absolutely helped me and pushed me and a lot of other guys towards physical exercise and physical appearance and hitting the gym. I was in a very unhealthy relationship <clears throat> and I'd been in that relationship for like four years and the red pill helped me leave that relationship and start going to the gym and gaining confidence and all of that. So I'll always be super grateful to them for that. Absolutely. And so I absolutely know what that, what this talks about, what chat GPT is talking about when it says this can bolster your confidence and give you a more commanding presence. Yeah. Like probably the quickest, easiest, cheapest. Okay. It's not quick cause it takes a little while, but I'll say the simplest fix for if you're sitting there feeling like, man, I just don't have enough masculine presence or I don't feel quite alpha male or I feel like people don't take me seriously. And this is what the red pill just drills into, you know, most of the guys on there. They're like, just hit the fucking gym. Just go to the gym. Just start lifting weights, start gaining some muscle. Obviously, there's more to it than just go to the gym. But if you can just start putting yourself in the gym and going regularly, you'll figure out all the rest of the stuff. So yeah, I absolutely fucking love this one. Good job, chat GPT. Chat GPT comes up with some pretty good shit most of the time. Master public speaking. This one's a little more out there, a little more esoteric, isn't it? This skill is crucial for asserting yourself in groups and leading others. Join a public speaking group, hire a coach, or take a course to improve. So I personally, like, I think this one is more... You can do it if you want to, but don't feel like you have to. I haven't really ever pub mastered public speaking. I mean, I, I know this kind of is like 
even when I'm sitting down to talk, I am thinking like, okay, there's like three and a half thousand people that have subscribed to you. Like, and obviously not all of those people watch every video, but I am thinking of the group in my head, but it's still like, I wish you guys got to be on the other side of this camera right now. Cause you'd look around this room and you'd go like, oh, Andy's just sitting in this room. It's really weird. It's such YouTube and, and podcasts and just content is such a strange concept. I'm literally just sitting here in a room by myself, yet we're technically having a conversation. And quite a few of you will leave a comment and I'll reply back and we'll go back and forth and we'll talk. Like it is a conversation, but it's it's not really the same thing as mastering public speaking. So I think you guys can master public speaking if you want to. I've had quite a lot of my coaching clients do this, like public speaking groups. So, so they call that, I think they call that Toastmasters. Um, I had one coaching client in particular who talked about doing improv and he was doing a lot of improv to really work on his confidence. And he found that that helped him a lot. Um, I had a friend, an old friend who did stand up comedy and used to just go to like open mics to practice that. Um, the, the coaching client of mine who did improv, I think he also did karaoke, although I might be thinking of another client cause I've had a few clients that have done karaoke, um, like public karaoke, not the private booth ones, but like, so you go to a bar and you're singing in front of like, I don't know, like 50 people or so. And they found that super useful. So yeah, take it or leave it with this one, master public speaking. I could see that definitely helping with confidence, but I don't think it's necessary for sure. I think there are other ways of working on your confidence, which is what this, this point is for. I think the main thing that improves your confidence is just running the numbers game, just playing the numbers game. So if it's with women, just going out and talking to literally hundreds of women and you'll get some confidence. I always say confidence is competence. Like if you can become competent at something like decent at something, in other words, if you do it enough times and get a bit of experience, you do just start to be confident. Another thing that really helps with confidence is embracing the suck, like giving yourself permission to suck and ironically saying, okay, I'm not going to be confident with this is a form of confidence because you can kind of relax and just go, it's okay for me to suck. And you fully embrace the fact that you suck. You do it anyway. There's a, there's a weird confidence that comes from that. So different ways of confidence. Public speaking is definitely one way to do it, but it's not the only way to do it. Cultivate self discipline. Ooh, I like this one. I got a lot to say on this one. So practice saying no to instant gratification in favor of long-term success. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. And I think guys beat themselves, or I think people beat themselves up with the word discipline and they'll go, man, I'm not disciplined. I'm so lazy. I'm a piece of shit. Realize that it's not binary. You're not either disciplined or lazy. It's not one or the other. It's discipline is like a skill that you can practice. That's why I love that the first word that chat GPT has used here is practice. It really is just practice. So you can give yourself permission to suck with discipline. I, at this point in time, I say this to my coaching clients all the time. I don't think I'm very disciplined. And I know that some people would look at me and be like, bro, like you're more disciplined than me. And like, yeah, I get that. But, and I, I'm definitely more disciplined than I was years ago, but I don't think I'm a super disciplined or m motivated person. I can be quite lazy. I spend a lot of time like watching YouTube, playing video games, laying on the couch, going for walks, like not really doing a whole lot. I think what has helped me is rather than calling it discipline, it's just taking action. And so I've never really looked at myself as either like lazy or disciplined because I think that's a value judgment. I think it just makes you feel shit about yourself and ironically makes it less likely that you'll take action. If you're sitting there saying, I'm lazy, I'm lazy, I'm not disciplined. You're not taking action. You're literally wasting time worrying about whether or not you're disciplined or lazy. And so I've always just looked at it like, yeah, I don't have much discipline and I'm quite lazy, but I will also just take some action. Remember guys, the way that you achieve your goals and get to the, the places that you want to be is not by not being lazy. It's by taking action. Like it literally is just taking action. So you can be simultaneously very lazy and also take action. And that's kind of how I've always gotten stuff done. I'll just spend a couple of hours a day taking some action, or if you struggle with that, just spend 15 minutes taking some action on whatever your goals might be, and then be fucking lazy. And over time, just try and do less and less of the lazy activities or less and less of the self-medication or instant gratification as ChatGPT is called it here, and a little more 
action that leads towards your long-term success. So yeah, I really like this practice saying no to instant gratification. That's a big one. And there's lots of things you can do to help. You can turn off social media. You can maybe delay how long you, or when you do your self medication. I've, I've talked about that in podcasts and stuff. I've said one of the cheat codes that I've always had is I still self medicate. You know, I will still watch movies and sit there watching YouTube and stuff like that. But what I do is I tell myself I'm only allowed to do that stuff after I've been productive for the day. So I can watch YouTube, I can sit there and play fucking video games, but excuse me, but I have to have already taken action. So I'll use the YouTube or the reward or whatever as exactly that a reward. And I'll make sure that I've taken action first. That's pretty much what chat GPT is saying here, right? Like practice saying no to instant gratification in favor of long term success. I phrase it like this, get your homework done, and then you can play your video games, you know, the same thing most of our parents told us, right? So in my mind, you can still play the video games and shit, or at least I'll phrase it like this, I have built everything I've built so far, still playing video games and fucking around a lot. I've just always had or for the last like five years, I've had that mindset of I'll do my homework first or like I'll record these videos, I'll do my coaching calls, I'll do all of that. And then I can fuck around and play some video games. So that's helped me. Self discipline is a key trait of assertive and successive individuals. Yeah, but uh, but like I said, don't focus on having to be this super hardcore disciplined man. I think a lot of guys look at like the alpha male, which is why I don't use the term alpha male, because a lot of guys will use that label to beat themselves up. You know, they'll, they'll have some weird idea of what an alpha male is in their head. They'll go, an alpha male is disciplined all the time. He's like a Spartan. He has cold showers every single day. He never, ever self-medicates. He's just disciplined. He's perfect. Everything is wonderful. And I'm not currently that. So therefore I'm a fucking loser. And it's like, no, just try and be a little bit better than you were in the past. The, the, alpha male that you have in your head doesn't really exist in the real world. You've sort of stuck all these different concepts of an alpha male together. You've added like James Bond plus, you know, the Spartans from that 300 movie. Plus you've added like anyone who takes cold showers. Plus you've added David Goggins. Plus you've added like fucking Alex Amozzi and Elon Musk and all these people who are killing it with business. You've added all those people together. And then you've said, okay, I have to be like that. It's also a false view because that's not what those people are. Using, let's say, Alex Hermosi as a good example, he has literally said in multiple podcasts now, I spend like a couple hours a day watching Netflix in the afternoon. I just veg out and lay on the couch and watch like shit. I watch like absolute trash because that helps me bust my ass and work on the business and shit during the day because I know that I get to chill and watch Netflix in the evening. So you likely have this weird concept of alpha males being perfect and disciplined all the time. Just try and be a little bit more disciplined than you are right now. We're aiming for slow improvements, not perfection. Yeah. This next one I love. Oh, I love this. Get my dick hard. Practice assertive communication. Fucking love this. The way that I would also phrase this as like honest communication or communication with integrity, like not lying, not saying what you want other people, what you think they want to hear, not being like a people pleaser, just like fucking speaking your truth and having integrity. So I love this. Be clear and direct about your needs. I don't use the word needs. So let's replace that. Sorry, chat GPT. I'm going to replace you once. I don't like the word needs. I don't really think we need anything. And I think the word need just makes you feel needy and in scarcity. I've done videos on that before. So be clear and direct about your wants or your desires. Uh, fair enough. It goes on to say once after that. There you go, ChatGPT. Sorry for editing you, ChatGPT. Please, when you take over the earth, please don't be mean to me and kill me for editing your perfect words, ChatGPT. I love you, Skynet. Be clear and direct about your wants, feelings, beliefs, and opinions. Yeah, I fucking love that. Yes, respect others' rights to express theirs as well. Thank you for adding that in. Learn to say no respectfully when necessary. Fucking perfect. Love this shit. So this is probably the best one we've read out so far. I love this. So there are so many different books and shit on how to be more honest. Probably the best one is when I say no, I feel guilty. Another really good one is No More Mr. Nice Guy. I myself have also done tons of content. I would go to my website, go to killyourinaloser.com. Just search for the word honesty. 
Probably the best one to read is honesty is an ideal that you work towards. And I talk about like how to practice your honesty, like literally how to get better at it. And I talk about how I wasn't always good at honesty. It's something that took me a couple of years to get good at. It was a process. I had to learn how to say no. Another really good book on learning how to say no respectfully. And I love that ChatGPT said the word respectfully, like at least for me personally, a big part of being quote alpha male. And again, I don't use that word, but alpha male means still like respecting other people and not just being like a complete fucking cunt. Cause you see that sometimes where, you know, guys will think, okay, if, in order for me to be more assertive and honest and all of that, I need to just steamroll over everyone all the time and just be blunt and don't give a fuck about anyone's feelings. And you can do that if you want to, I'm not saying that's wrong, but that's not really what my content is. My content is here to sort of leave other people better than you found them to try and make the world a little bit better, a little bit more empathetic, a little bit kinder. That's the mission that I'm on. So I love this concept of saying no respectfully, a really good book on that. Um, fuck, I don't know which book it is. So it's one of the Byron Katie books. It might be, I need your love. Is that true? I think it's that book. So I need your love. Is that true? She talks about how to say no in a respectful way. And the way that you do it, is you sort of like sandwich in the no with sort of like almost a compliment. And so I do this all the time. And the way that you do it is instead of just saying like, no, I don't want to do that. You say, man, I love that you asked me, but no, thank you. Or like, no, I don't want to do that, but hey, good job asking. Or no, thanks. I'm not really interested, but I love that you're asking for what you want. I love that you're confident enough to ask for what you want. So you sort of give a little compliment either before you say no or after you say no, but, but sort of push it or squash it in there with your no. If you just say no, that can come across a little bit asshole-ish, a little bit blunt. And again, do that if you want to. It's not up to me to tell you how to speak or to police your language. That's the last thing I'd ever want to do. But I've just found the world is a lot kinder to me. And I feel a lot better about myself when I say no in a respectful, just a kind way, an empathetic way. Because understand that some people really struggle to ask for what they want. I mean, that was the previous point in this thing, right? Like, I guess it's, it's the same thing in this one. You know, be clear about what you want. And for some of us, that's very hard. It was very fucking hard for me at first. I had to learn how to do it. And so when someone else comes to me and asks for, like, I literally had an email today, actually, from someone that emailed me asking for something. And I could have just said no, or I could have deleted the email, but I said like, no man, like, here you go. And I love that you fucking asked for this. So yeah, try and say, well, I like to try and say, I appreciate you asking, or it's cool of you for asking or good job for asking. Cause I know how hard it is for me to ask for what I want sometimes. And I fully empathize and understand with someone who's come to me asking for something. Sometimes that's not easy. And I respect that. So that's another thing you can say, you can say, bro, I fucking respect you for asking this. It's going to be a no but I respect you for asking like good fucking job. Number six, develop leadership skills. Oh my God. Yeah. Let's get those leadership skills. A really good book on this before I even read what chat GPT wrote is extreme ownership by Jocko Willink. Probably the best leadership book I've ever read. It's about a lot of concepts or it has a lot of concepts that I talk about. Like you know, it's you and me on the same team, like treat people like they're on your team, taking full responsibility for shit. Every problem has a solution, you know, come up with a, a list of things that you're going to do, but then just do one, st one thing at a time. Like don't get too overwhelmed by all the steps that you need to take. It's a really good book. So again, extreme ownership by Jocko Willink. So chat GPT says, take on leadership roles in your workplace. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something I encourage. I can do a video on this. If you guys are interested, leave a comment and tell me if you are pretty much every job I've ever had, I have become a manager within like three months of working there, like basically every job. And I can talk about how I've done that. If you guys are interested and you want me to do a video on that, but the answer is I just take on leadership. I won't say roles, so I, I don't take on leadership roles, but what I've always done is taken on leadership tasks. So even when I'm a shit kicker, like I had one job where I was like, I think I was 18 and I was just like a trolley collector at a supermarket. So I was just the dude that would walk around outside and collect all the, the trolleys, right? And then bring them back in. But I would take on like extra tasks. And so I would finish all the trolleys in like record time as quickly as I could. Cause most people like drag their heels with that job and they fuck around and take like five hours. Whereas I'd do it in like half an hour. And then I would come back into the store and I would go up to the manager or, you know, someone else and be like, yo, Hey, I've done all the trolleys. 
what can I do next? Like, how can I take more work off your plate? How can I help you? Like, like, how can I, what can I do for the store? What can I do for the customers? And I would take on like extra tasks, if you know what I mean. And then I would bang out those tasks and I come back and be like, okay, I've done that. What next? What do you want me to do next? And then I'd get that done. I'd come back and I'd just be doing this like five or 10 times during like an eight hour shift. Like I would just get fucking 10 times more done than anyone else. And then I like after two or three months, every single job I've had pretty much, they'd just be like, holy fuck, like we're just going to give you a promotion. This is insane. So I kind of just said everything there. But if you guys want me to go into more detail on that, I could talk about some of the other jobs that I've had and promotions that I've had being like a manager and shit like that in lots of jobs. I can talk about that. Just leave a comment and I'll happily do that. But yeah, I, I love the idea of like leadership. I really do. Like, cause my mindset is if I'm going to be quite stuck in a job, especially if it's like a dead end or a minimum wage or just a shitty job, which I've worked quite a few of those. I want to make the most of this job. And if I can get promoted or if I can just take on extra tasks or if I can just learn shit. And that's another thing I've often done. I would just go up to the managers and be like, yo, can you teach me to do your job? I, I, like, I'm not saying I want to be promoted, but like, can I help you with your job? And pretty much every manager is going to be like, well, fuck yes. You're telling me you're going to help me with my job and take tasks off my plate and I don't have to pay you for that. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I'll teach you fucking everything that I'm doing. In other words, you're helping them delegate more tasks to you. And that's good for you because you get to learn. Like, I'm really a, not a fan of people saying, man, this job is a minimum wage job or it sucks or it's a dead end job. It's like, no, your mindset is dead end. Like your mindset is minimum wage. Your mindset is a poor poverty mindset. It's why you're not getting promotions. It's why you're not building anything. It's why people aren't gathering around you and trying to help you succeed because you have a very victim or like poor mindset. So yeah, I love that concept. Same shit here with local community and social groups. Yeah, you can, th there's so many different ways to develop your leadership skills. Like I said, I would start with the book, Extreme Ownership and whatever job you're in right now, I would start having the mindset of like, how can I learn more? How can I grow more? Literally have the mindset of how can I take tasks off my manager's or my boss's plate? Like literally, how can I, how can they delegate tasks to me? What do I have to learn? Who do I have to ask? Like, and I'm telling you the vast majority of people will be like, oh my God, yes, please. I would love to train you to do what parts of what I'm doing. And yeah, that's, yeah, I don't think, yeah, that's all I want to say on that. The rest is, yeah. Number seven, inverse, invest in personal growth. Well, yeah. What do we talk about on this channel, ladies and gentlemen? We talk about self-improvement, continuously work on improving yourself intellectually, emotionally, and socially. I'd also say physically, but they already said that. Chat GPT already said that. The more you learn, the more confident you become in various social situations. Yeah, for sure. Like another really s simple or brain dead simple path to becoming a quote alpha male is to just improve yourself every single fucking day. Like learn more, grow more, try more, do more, play the numbers game harder, improve your body, improve your mindset, work on happiness, work on positive mindset, all of that kind of shit. Like absolutely fucking lutely give more value to other people, get better at giving value to other people. Obviously give value to yourself along the way. Number eight, embrace risk. Put yourself in challenging situations that push you to face fears and gain new experiences. Yeah, I love this face fears. One of the first podcasts I ever did. In fact, I think it was the th like fifth podcast I ever did before even this YouTube channel. So on Spotify, it was called run towards your fear or run towards fear. And I talked about one of my mindsets that's really helped me or a philosophy that's helped me over the last few years is anytime I'm terrified of something, I will just go, okay, I have to run towards this. I can't avoid this. I have to just fucking run towards this, not even face it. Like this says face fears. I would change that. And sorry to do this to you, chat GPT. Again, please don't fucking kill me, but I would run towards your fears and gain new experiences. Yeah. I'd absolutely like run towards the fear. Don't just face it, like run towards it. Even if it terrifies you, especially if it terrifies you. Yeah. This can be in the form of making investment decisions. I mean, you don't have to be an investor. Public speaking, that's a good one. Starting a new project, that's a good one. Starting something, here's another one I'd say. Starting something that you don't think you're going to succeed at or you're not sure how you're going to succeed at. 
Like a lot of people will say, I don't know if I can make it with this goal. So therefore I will only start the goal when I'm a hundred percent sure that I'm going to make it. And it's like, sorry, bitch, the world doesn't owe you anything. The world doesn't owe you a promise that you're going to make it. Are you either going to fucking start and get there in the end through, you know, gradual, slow improvement over time and consistency, or are you going to just ask or demand a fucking written contract from the universe every time you start a goal like i will not start this goal until you sign this contract universe telling me that i'm definitely going to make it so yeah every goal comes with i wouldn't even say risk it's more like doubts and insecurities i don't even think goals are that risky i personally don't take many risks i'm just not a i'm a very risk averse person but i i do run towards my fears Traveling alone. Yeah, I wouldn't even say it's a risk. So I would change the word risk here to like embrace fears. Like I don't even think you have to embrace risks. I never really have. I've done things that scare me, but they weren't like risky. You know what I mean? Like probably the biggest example is a lot of the content I've done has fucking terrified me. Like talking about when I went to prison, talking about my depression and my suicidal years and all of that. But that wasn't like a risk. It was more like a fear. I guess there is a risk there of like, what if you ostracize your audience? What if they don't like this message? So yeah, I guess it's a tiny risk, but it's more like a fear. Practice active listening. Yeah, maybe I'd, I'd change that to like, or I'd call that empathetic listening. Dominance isn't just about speaking. It's about being a leader who can listen, understand, and then guide. Yeah, fucking thank you, ChatGPT. So really good book on this, again, is Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. And if you, and, and he talks a lot about this, he talks a lot about like how to listen to your squad or listen to your people. And by the way, if you don't know who Jocko Willink is, he is like the most masculine human being that you will ever fucking see. And like, you guys think David Goggins is masculine? No, Jocko Willink is like David Goggins on fucking steroids. So this is Jocko Willink. Like the man is just like, he was a Navy SEAL. He's just like built like a brick shit house, as we say in Australia. And that's a compliment, by the way. Like he's just built like a goddamn fucking tank. Like he, he does like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He takes no prisoners. Look, this is the face of a man who doesn't fuck around. And this man is telling you leadership isn't about dominating other people. Leadership isn't about just like stepping on other people and getting what you want and force and all of that. He goes, no, if you do that, and he talks about this in his book. He goes, if you just dominate other people and step all over them, they're going to sabotage you. And I think that's the the mistake that a lot of guys make on their quest to become a quote alpha male is they go, let me be all Machiavellian about it. My friend Cam calls it like, or in the in the case of dating, he calls it like black hat dating rather than like white hat dating. And by black hat, it just means like using manipulation, like using whatever means possible in order to get the dating results that you want. And that's obviously not something that here I advocate. We advocate for honesty and empathy and all of that. And I see a lot of guys doing those like black hat methods of like, if I want people to do what I want them to do, I will just step all over them, force them. I will threaten them. I will just be blunt. I will just fucking say what I want. And if they don't like it, I will just fucking hate on them and shit like that. All that you end up doing, like you get what you want temporarily, but those people aren't going to be loyal to you for life. In fact, the very first opportunity that they get to sabotage you, they will take. Like think about your, I'm sure a lot of you have had maybe a boss that you didn't really like, that was kind of a dick or a bit of a bitch. What do you do? Do you go above and beyond to help that person? Or as soon as their back is turned, do you just go back to laziness? Or do you even sometimes actively sabotage them in tiny little ways that they won't find out? But like, do you just, you know, if they say, hey, I need you to file this report, do you just like half-ass the report? Or if they need you to tidy up rather than like sweeping all the stuff into a trash bin and getting rid of it, you just kind of sweep it under the fucking shelves and you go, fuck you, ha ha, I sabotaged just a little bit. I did what you wanted, but I didn't do it in the way that I know you wanted me to in your head. I kind of sabotaged a little bit, but I can't get into trouble because you didn't tell me not to do that. You're kind of being like a little brat almost like, and I've done that myself many times with bosses that are dicks. Like I kind of try and sabotage them. I did that in a school with teachers that just weren't nice to me. I was like, all right. I'm going to disturb your class as much as I humanly possibly can because I'm a little fucking brat, but I'm going to do it in a way that you can't get me in trouble. So I'm just going to cough a lot. And then when you yell at me for coughing, I'll be like, I'm so sorry, miss. It's just that my voice is like, you know, I can't help it. Like I'm going to fucking sabotage you because you're being a cunt. 
Like that's just human nature versus someone who, you know, as this chat GPT says, imagine a leader or a boss or whatever who listens, understands, and then guides. A leader that actually gives a shit about you. What will you do for that person? You go, holy fuck, I feel like my voice is heard. I feel like this person is on my team. I feel like they're not just dominating me. They want me to win too. In other words, I feel like this leader or this alpha male doesn't think of this as a zero-sum game where he wins and I lose. Instead, he's thinking of, of like, oh fuck, I win and he wins. Like, we both get to win. So, yeah, I absolutely love this kind of shit. I also have an article on my website this one here, it's an article and I also did a podcast with it too called how to take the lead without being controlling. And I was talking specifically about like a man taking the lead with a woman, but it absolutely applies to leadership and, and stuff like that. And so here's my three step formula. You take the lead by initiating the conversation, right? Whatever you might be talking about. You ask for the other person's input, you listen to the input and you take it into consideration. And sometimes you will take on that input and you'll go, actually, fuck it. Yeah, that's a good idea. We're going to do that. Or you'll go, okay, I've listened to your input, but I still think we're going to go with my final, with my decision because blah, 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 this is why, and this is what I'm thinking. And you sort of communicate all that. And then the third part is you make the final decision. So that's how, you know, I quote alpha male takes the lead without completely dominating the other person. So you listen to the input, you take it on board. Sometimes you change your mind because the input is good. In other words, take your ego and take the other person's ego out of it and just listen to the actual fucking input. In other words, put the mission first, whatever that might be. If it's in a leadership role, you know, there will be some sort of mission or a goal. Put that first and only listen to good ideas, whether those ideas come from you or the other person. Jocko Willing talks a lot about this in his book as well. So it's all sort of the same concept. So yeah, I love how much of these are about leadership as well, by the way. Demonstrate value. Bring something valuable to the table in all interactions. Yeah, what am I always saying, guys? I talk about this all the time. Like, always give value. Give value, give value, give value, because then people will give value back to you. They'll be loyal to you, all of that kind of stuff. So this could be in the form of knowledge, skills, positivity. That's a big one. Or support. Yeah, I talk about this a lot. Quite a few people, especially in my coaching program, actually, it comes up a lot where guys will come to the program and they'll go, I just don't feel like I have a ton to give. And they almost feel guilty, right? Like, fuck, even recently, I, I did this call with a guy to see if he wanted to do coaching. And he's really interested, but he's worried that he'll be a burden on the group. And his main concern was, I'm just worried that I won't have anything else to give everyone else in the group. And they'll all be giving, giving, giving to me, but I'll just be taking, 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 and I won't have anything to give back. And literally I said this exact fucking thing. I was like, bro, if you have nothing else to give other than these two beautiful words here, positivity or support, that is unbelievably so much. I said, you don't have to have advice or knowledge or any of that. And this applies to so many of you listening. So many of you, I've had this, this fucking comes up so many times where someone will say, Andy, I really want to help this friend of mine, but I don't know how to help him. Like, I don't know what the right thing to say is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't have the knowledge in the thing that he wants help with. What the fuck do I do? And I will say time and time again, bro, just be there for your friend. Literally just say, I am here. That's it. I give the same advice for funerals. I've had people ask me for funeral advice. Don't ask me why, but where they say, I'm going to this funeral. I don't know what I should do. Like, what am I supposed to say? How do I know what the right thing to say is? And I say, this is your fucking sentence. I am here. That's it. Give people a hug and say, I'm here. I am here. Or you can say, I'm listening, or I'm here for you, or I understand any of that. But you just say, I'm here. That's all people fucking want. When someone's going through a breakup, they just want to hear from you. I'm here, bro. I'm here. I got you, man. I I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. That's another thing people love to hear. I'm not going anywhere. I'm right here. I got you. I'm here. That's all we fucking want. Human beings just want to know that we're not alone. Like that's the biggest thing we want. So, you know, if you're struggling to demonstrate value or to give value to other people, or you sometimes feel like you're just like, take, 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 but you're not really giving anything, just fucking be there for people. Just say like, yo, hey, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. You don't even have to know what the right thing to say is. If they then dump all their problems on you and tell you all this shit and you're going like, oh, fuck, like, I don't know how to solve that. You just say like, man, that sounds real tough. I'm here for you, dude. Like, what can I do? do, you, do or did you want me to just be here? Like, even if I can't do anything, I'm, I'm here, man. I'm listening, dude. 
I'm listening. Think about the times where you have vented or shared with a friend or, you know, a random stranger or whatever. You share your problems. You feel a little bit better. Like a problem shared is a problem halved is the same. And so you can offer that to other people. Just fucking be there. So I love that ChatGPT ends with this, you know, demonstrate value. Yeah, I, I giving value is a big fucking important trait to me. So yeah, I think that's all ChatGPT, right? Yeah. There's obviously other things and feel free to leave comments on, you know, if you have extra things that you want to, that you think that are maybe important to you when it comes to being a quote alpha male. But I really want to underline what I said at the start. There's no like correct way of being a man or being an alpha male or being like powerful or any of that shit. Like there's a million different ways to achieve that shit. And at the end of the day, good looking loser said it best or my favorite quote. He said, an alpha male is someone who does whatever the fuck he wants. And that doesn't mean like hurting other people, although sure, if you want to do that, I can't stop you. But he basically just meant whatever you want to do in every moment, fucking do that. Like that's an alpha male. Don't worry about whether or not someone else says you're a pussy for doing that or you're a beta or you're a simp. Like half of the shit, I've said this so many times, half of the shit that I do. And I used to get this when I did post on the red pill, when I would go and read the comments, I would get people saying like, bro, this is beta. You're being a beta male. When I posted, this is my favorite sh story to share. When I posted on the red pill and talked about how I just had a foursome with three other women and like, here's everything I did. And like, thank you, red pill. Cause you guys helped me get to this point through self-improvement. And here's how you can have a foursome too. And here's the experience. And here's like some photos from the fucking foursome. Here's a couple of videos. It was amazing. The girls had a good time. I had a good time. I had comments from people saying, bro, this is beta male shit. You're being a beta male by chasing women this much. By focusing on having a foursome, you're a beta male. And I was like, holy shit. That was like the moment. That was literally the moment that I was like, okay, I'm never going to read any comments on the red pill ever again. And I haven't. Like, I don't read the fucking... I just dump my articles on there and I leave. I'm not going to read that shit. And so if I can get called a beta male for having sex with three women at once, including taking photos and videos and having a great time and all of that, if having sex with three women at once is beta... And it wasn't just one or two people that said that. It was like a lot of people and a lot of upvotes and a lot of discussion about, yeah, this guy is beta. This is beta as fuck. Like, why aren't you concentrating on the gym, bro? Like, why are you fucking having sex with women? That's fucking beta, bro. You should be on your mission, not having sex with women. That's beta. If having sex with three women is beta, fucking anything can be beta, according to random people, right? And that's kind of my point here. The terms alpha male and beta male, they don't really mean anything, or they mean different things to different people. So therefore, there's no objective truth. If people can disagree on whether something is alpha or beta, then there is no fucking objective alpha or beta. It's just opinions. I say the same shit with people who, or, or the idea of giving women a ranking, like a number, You'll notice in my content, I have never said like this woman is a six out of 10 or this woman is an eight because those numbers don't fucking mean anything. Someone will come along and be like, whoa, bro, no, that woman's a three. No, dude, she's actually a nine. No, dude, she's like a 6.438127. No way, man. She's like a fucking 3.18629 at best, maybe a 6210 at best. You're being silly. And so people disagree on the actual fucking numbers because there is no objective, like, obviously there are women who are more likely to be ranked attractive by more people. We get that. But nobody, there's no woman that every man on earth agrees is a nine or a six or a 10. It's all subjective. And so I don't really like to use those numbers because they're just goofy as fuck. And when you get far enough along, you realize that numbers like that don't fucking matter. They matter for the, dare I say it, I'll phrase it in a nice way. They matter to guys who are at the start or in the middle of their having sex, getting laid journey. They matter a lot because you you care about you care about your ego. You care about others and how they might judge you. You care about bragging to other guys. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with all of that. But when you go far enough along and you've had your fill of sex with enough women and done enough stuff and it's you know been this amazing experience, you don't sit there and give a shit about like numbers or how hot she is. You also realize there's more to it than just her attractiveness. There's, is she a cool person? Is she loyal? Is she affectionate? Is she drama free? Is she into really kinky stuff? Like a woman who's into really kinky stuff gets a bump up in terms of attractiveness. Like I've been with some women that are just insanely hot 
but so unbelievably boring in bed that I'm just like, I, I'm sorry, this isn't, I'm not even turned on anymore. I was turned on looking at you, but like, this is a turn off. You don't want to try anything. You say no every time I suggest something. You're kind of a diva. This isn't hot to me. And then I've been with plenty of women that are less attractive or maybe like they're average or they're cute or they're above average. And they're just like absolutely fucking filthy in the bedroom. And you're just like, holy shit, this is so hot. And they just want to do everything. They want to try everything. They just, they come up with ideas. They show initiative. They're some women that are a little more assertive and aggressive. I fucking love that when a woman's like really passionate and jumps on top of you and just starts making out with you. It's like, that can be some of the most mind blowing sex of your life. On paper, you would look at her and be like, well, she's not like a 10 out of 10, but it's like, but sexually she is. So I think it's just very narrow-minded to look only at a woman's attractiveness. I'm sure every feminist out there is clapping right now and going, oh my God, yay, yeah, don't objectify women. Like, yeah, I kind of agree with you. Hey, it's just, if you pick one point, and I think that's what al the concept of an alpha male is too. A lot of guys will pick one point and be like, okay, on this one point, you're not a 10 out of 10 in terms of being an alpha male, therefore you're a beta male. And it's like, bro, there's more to me than that. Like the, another way of phrasing that is there's so many different definitions of what an alpha male is. Like, let's say a guy who is just the pillar of his community, right? He gets in there and he mentors like young kids and he gives a lot back and he's like the, the top of his church and like everybody in this community looks up to him. He's almost like the elder of the community, but maybe he doesn't have a whole lot of sex. Is that an alpha male? Yeah. You could say it's an alpha male. Maybe a guy who's just an absolute fucking beefcake in the gym. Like the biggest guy in the gym, like massive, like people are scared of him. Everyone gets out of this guy's way. He's a big fucking alpha male. But then he goes home and his wife like fucking whips him and shit. Would you say he's an alpha male? Maybe, maybe not. Like he's an alpha male in the gym. That's another thing to think about. You can be an alpha male in a certain domain. Like he's the king of that gym. And then he goes home and he's like, the, he's whipped by his wife. Like that's, is that an alpha male? Is it? And so you see how these concepts are kind of silly, but whatever, this was meant to be a fun little video, more about how to increase your own masculinity, whatever that might mean as well. That's another concept that means a million different things. But if these things are important to you, have at it. This isn't me telling you not to use words like alpha male. One of the guys that I respect the most and has helped me the most, Caleb Jones, he, his entire program, his entire philosophy is called Alpha Male 2.0, and he uses this fucking concept. He would probably agree with me on a lot of this, though, that he'd be like, he even says there's different types of alpha males. And so, yeah, it's, it's not like a one-size-fits-all, you must do this. Just do whatever makes you happy. And in my mind, as long as you're not hurting anyone else, if it's what you want to do, fucking do it. All right, nothing else I want to say. I had fun with this. I like these kind of more chill videos. Let me know if you like this more chill format. I'm going to do a few more of these just because they're less pressure. Like I said, I've been putting a lot of pressure on myself lately that every video has to be like perfect and ugh, it's just making it not so fun to do videos. So in the spirit of giving myself permission to suck, I might do a few more of these chill videos. I'll make sure I still add a ton of value into every single one. Like obviously these are going to be, you know, useful hopefully, but yeah, we'll do some more chill videos. I also have a Spotify podcast. If you haven't been checking that out, there's a lot of content that, well, all the content on there doesn't get shown on this YouTube video and by, vice versa. So completely different content, all about self-improvement and all of that kind of shit, but go check that out. There's also coaching. If you're interested, I will leave a link in the description. As always, ladies and gentlemen, go out there and crush your goals.